Faith Ministry here at Koinonia Christian Church is excited to bring you an experience that is sweeping the nation, transforming lives, and coming soon to a city near you. The experience of hiding behind the lipstick. Hiding Behind the Lipstick was created by Maisha Cheney, author and first lady of Antioch Church of Long Beach in Long Beach, California. Today, we're gonna talk to the women behind the Women of Faith Ministry that is responsible for bringing this experience to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Welcome everybody, Renee Lange. Hi, Desiree, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, doing I'm doing good. I mean, I'm doing great. Um, we're here at Koinonia Christian Church and uh, we're getting ready for the conference that starts tonight. Yes. I'm excited about the things that are going to happen and I'm really excited to sit down and talk with you because I remember sharing this with you right after the women of after the women's Equip conference about conference. a vision mm -hmm. that I had mm -hmm. and just to see it come to fruition, fruition and have you sitting here next to me. It makes me it makes me giddy. So. Thank That's great. You. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about hiding behind the lipstick. And I wanted to know, how did you come in contact with hiding behind the lipstick? And can you share the importance of it? Sure. Uh, my pastor, Pastor Ronnie Goins, he sent me a video clip mm -hmm. and wanted to ask me what did I think of it. And so in, when I saw the first video clip, I asked him, I said, what do we need to do to do this? Mm -hmm. I'm all in. Uh, the initial video clip was so profound and it gripped the heart of issues that we deal with as women mm -hmm. and issues that we don't talk about so much. There are some issues in life that we do talk about, but there's so many others that we hide behind. And so I initially, I mean, immediately I got the concept mm -hmm. of the whole uh, title of this event when I saw the video. So I was ready to em embrace it wholeheartedly. Do you have a lipstick confession that you'd be comfortable to share? Sure, I, I do have one. In fact, I was contemplating even sharing it during the conference, but uh, chose to just wait. So maybe this was the time for it to, to come about. This won't show until after the conference, so yeah, it's they, they won't see it until <laughs> after the conference. So, Okay, so my, what my lipstick confession would be, or one of my lipstick confession is, is that everybody see me as I am now. Little did they know when I was a kid, I was always told that I was dumb, I was slow, I was stupid, you know, those type of things. And I mean, to a degree, I, as a kid, I was slow. You know, we had this thing that my family joked about. I used to always drop eggs. We don't know why, but I used to always drop eggs. Eggs? Eggs. So when we went to the grocery like store. Like scrambled eggs? No, raw eggs. Raw eggs. Yeah, yeah. raw uh -huh. eggs. So whenever we went to the grocery store, it was like, don't let me eat whole eggs, because I always dropped them. I don't know why, you know. Um, I was the type of child that always had accidents. I was accident prone, or what have you. But uh, just in school, you know, just tagged with that. And so uh, that affected me. And I settled to be a C and D student. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of my life and it really wasn't until I got in college that God started dealing with me and uh, showing me who I really was in him and uh, through him I am a wife my husband and I have been married just celebrate 28 years of marriage we have two beautiful kids which you know of and I'm an entrepreneur and I've been blessed to be the director of the women's ministry here at Koinonia. And so I say that that's a lot to say for somebody that was told that they were slow, dumb, and stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you internalize that? D do you ever remind yourself or, because sometimes I think the voices inside us hurt us more sometimes than people can say to us. Do you ever finding those voices telling you that? Oh yeah. Definitely when things get challenging, uh, when I'm not quite sure of myself, and I think we all have those seasons when we're not quite sure of ourselves, And I just have to be reminded of the experience that I had when I was in college, when the Lord showed me, either you're what they call you, or will you allow me to show you who I created you to be? Mm -hmm. And so that, I go back to that, you know, uh, even with being here in Texas now, you know, originally from New Orleans and having a prosperous growing business in New Orleans and then coming to Texas after Katrina and not necessarily having my business where it used to be, God often remind me, 
Let me show you who I purpose you to be. And it's not where you at, it's not what you have at any given moment that make you who you are. It's being who he has ordained for you to be. And so when those words come up to me, when I start feeling like that, that maybe I can't do it, maybe I am a little slow or what have you, he kind of nudged me and remind me who I am. Yeah. Uh, when I was researching questions and stuff that I want to ask you, um, I opened up the Bible and I said, well, there's got to be women here in the Bible who wore masks. And the two that stood out the most to me were Esther mm -hmm. and Rahab. I don't think they wore masks in the, in the sense that they were fronting or trying to be somebody mm -hmm. who they were not. I think the type of masks that they wore were more strategic. Mm -hmm. um, in today's society, what would a strategic mask look like? And do you think it's sometimes necessary? Well, let me answer your second question okay. first. I think sometimes it is necessary. And I say that not necessarily because I agree upon it. I think because of society mm -hmm. and the norms of society now and some of the things that you have to acclimate to mm -hmm. to make it in society, uh, sometimes it's necessary uh, to have the mask. Sometimes it's necessary to not, and strategic, to not really show who you are at a given time frame until the appropriate time comes. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes your the potential of who you are can overshadow the, the potential of you going to a level that you need to go to. It sounds like Esther. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. that, that that's, yeah. That's what yeah. she had to do. Yeah. She had that potential, but it had to be at the appointed time mm -hmm. for it to be released, you know? And I even think of Rahab. You know, I think so somewhere within Rahab, uh, there was a potential there that she knew not necessarily fully of mm -hmm. until she had that face-to-face -face encounter with, with the, the men, yeah. yeah, with the men of Israel, yeah. and it drew it out of her, you know. So I do believe that we all have this beacon that God has placed in us, that He communicated with us when He said He foreknew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. And we have to identify, we have to learn to separate ourselves. See, we've been born in the world, we were birthed in the world, so we know world society, we know what we're supposed to do for the world system. And we've known that for so many years. And then we are born again in Christ. And so now we have to separate what the world has taught us to learn what God has purposed for us when he spoke to us before, he, before we were ever birthed in the naturally birth. And so that's a journey. There's a separation that has to take. Uh, one is doing and one is being. When we're in the world, we're doing. But when we're with God, we're being what he's purposed for us to be. Let's talk about purpose. Okay. Um, the Women of Faith Ministry here at Koinonia Christian Church really goes out of its way to create a safe place where women can be who they were purposed to be. Um, can, you briefly ex uh, can you briefly share some of the events that the Women of Faith is responsible for having for the women here? Sure. Uh, I'm going to talk from our largest event first. Okay. And it is our conference that we have every year. Each year it transforms more and more because it becomes a hub. And when women come, I've heard over and over, ladies come that are visitors, and they come expecting one thing because they've been to a lot of women's conference, mm -hmm. and they get here and they feel a genuine sisterhood. They don't feel like you just smile and saying hi to say hi, mm -hmm. you know, but there's that genuine love. Mm -hmm. And you know, God gave us about a year ago uh, this theme, Sisterhood Unleashed. And literally that's what everything has been birthed out, that whole sisterhood. So to develop sisterhood, we've been doing a lot of different events with women that allows us to have intimate relationship with each other and get to know each other and to find out that the issue that I have is the same issue that you have. And we grow from each other and encourage each other in that. So we have things like the health and fitness that we do every month. We have uh, trail walks that we do. We have the book club that we do. Uh, we have what we call sister girl talk, and we have what we call sister girl time. Sister girl talk is when we come together and we have a forum and we submit questions and discuss things that are true to, to us as women that we deal with but don't talk about on, on the surface. And then we have sister girl time, 
where we just hang out together. We go to the movies, we go and do paint with a twist. You know, so we have a lot of different things. And then we also have a newsletter that we do that's called our Unleash Newsletter. And it has become the platform where ladies who normally would not have told their story mm -hmm. have a place to tell their story. And they could tell it from their heart mm -hmm. and is not changed in any format. We stay true to what their story is mm -hmm. and allow them to minister to a sister that they won't see face to face, but a sister that will read their story. So it sounds like that the Women of Faith Ministry here already has an environment that's built around showing who you really are, not putting on the lipstick or putting on airs because you have all these different things where you can uh, interact on a personal level, not just necessarily corporate and worship, but just actually spending some time one-on-one -on -one getting to know yeah. each other. Yeah. Um, what are you hoping that the women will get from the hiding behind the lipstick experience? The very first thing is that they don't see this as just an event. Mm -hmm. It's not a group of women that are just gathering together uh, because we're drawn by a theme. Um, this is a set time. And my key, I would say my heart's desire would be that women would come and from the time they walk through the doors, they would sense that God is here and their heart will settle down and they will ease into a place where they allow God to minister to them, that they'll allow him to go to the vulnerable places that they allow him to go to the hidden places in their heart that they have tucked away issues and circumstances and situations and allow him to speak to them so that when they leave here, they're transformed. They leave with a seed planted of who they really are. They leave knowing that though I've gone through this, this does not have to identify who I am. They leave knowing that I don't have to be ashamed of my past. They leave knowing that God has forgiven me for my wrongdoing that I have done. He doesn't hold it over me. So I can be free to know who I am in Him. They leave knowing that they can start life anew again. I remember one Sunday telling the ladies that they would learn to breathe again. They would learn to live again. And so that's what my aspirations are for them. Uh, wow. <laughs> Um, I feel inspired. I'm sorry. I, um, that speaks to me in my heart because I have a lot of those things, a lot of those issues tucked away in, in, in my heart. Sometimes the confidence isn't there. The insecurities are, are there. The voices are there. You know, who do you think you are? Those sort, And it's not necessarily me hearing it from somebody else. You know, I hear it from myself, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, those voices never, they will always be there. They are just diminished when we give God the capacity that he desires to have in us. And it, it takes, it's, it's, a, it's a forever cycle mm -hmm. that we go through. I'm challenged as being the director of the women's ministry. Am I doing it right? Is this where I'm really supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it all? Do they get it? If we do another event, will it have the impact that it's supposed to have? You know, so we're, 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 we're going to have those voices. But I'm grateful to God that there's a greater voice that reminds us, you know, that he's with us. Mm -hmm. This is what he's called for us to do. This is the appointed time. And we just got to keep being obedient to him. Um, so tonight, mm -hmm. lipstick will come off. Yes. Right. What is your advice for making sure the lipstick stays off or a different shade of lipstick doesn't, doesn't come, come on. on? Yeah, that's a challenge. And it's more of a personal challenge than corporate. Mm -hmm. It's taking hold of what takes place tonight and owning it. Owning it to the point where when you walk out of these doors, the things that challenge you. Some ladies will be challenged soon as they walk out of these doors for that lipstick to come back on, that situation, that circumstance. Mm -hmm. To be able to be rooted, flat-footed, and say there's none of that in me anymore. Mm -hmm. God has done this thing. I'm taking ownership of what God has done in me tonight. And so I stand in the power that he gives me 
through Christ Jesus to say no. You know, we say there's a scripture that says that God will give us a way of escape. And years ago, a girlfriend of mine said something that was so profound when we were talking about that scripture. She says, Renee, we're always looking for an open door. We, we, you know, we say, if I call him and he doesn't answer the phone, then I know that's, you know, that's God telling me, leave it alone, you know, or, you know, different things like that we, we home into as our way of escape. And she says, but Renee, she says, you know what I realize? Sometimes the way of escape is just simply saying no. Yeah. Just simply saying no. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not doing it again. No, it won't affect my, my life again. I tell the ladies uh, when we meet that there's times when you have the two voices that come that we spoke about early. And I said, the enemy does not want you to give God praises. So when the voice that he speaks of the negatives or the plan A, C, D, E, F, G that you're trying to get instead of sticking with the plan A that God has given you, yeah. then what you do in that moment, I encourage them, start praising God. God, I love you. God, you're awesome. Hallelujah. I said, if you just say hallelujah, if you just call the name of Jesus, then the enemy will get upset mm -hmm. because then he realized if I keep giving her those thoughts, those ideas, she's gonna start saying his name. Mm -hmm. So then you'll see that those thoughts start diminishing and you find yourself worshiping God even more. Okay, well, we're gonna pause right there because we don't wanna give um, too much away. Our hope is that you or someone you know would come from behind the lipstick and be the woman that you were purposed to be. Renee, thank you very much for sitting down and inspiring me and sharing your story. Thank you so much. You know I already love you. Yes, I do. And can I say this to you? Thank you for trusting God because I remember the conversation that we had. And for you to be doing this and for me to, to be, it's really an honor to be a part of it and see you doing it. Uh, this is encouragement to so many other ladies out there that will see this, that God has been telling them, I have something for you to do. He's shown it to them, but they've just been scared to walk out on faith. Ladies, I want you to look at this video and I want you to see what God is doing in and through Desiree. He spoke to her just like he's speaking to you and you can step out in faith. He's never gonna leave you. He won't make you be ashamed or have you be put to shame. Keep trusting God, be obedient to him, incline your ears to his voice and he'll always be there with you and you'll always prosper in him. That's it everybody. Um, have a great day and a blessed week. Just let him try. I don't listen to them, sister. Let me tell you, I see it's the same pretty face, but a brand new smile. A woman of faith, I got a brand new style. Letting go and trusting God. See if God changed me, He can surely change you singing. Yeah.